Hey, doesn't this look like a beautiful guitar? We got a nice Reverend Charger 290 here. Oh wait, that's not stock. Is that a clean cut in the headstock? Is that glue? Oh no, what happened? Subscribe. What's up nerds? My name is Corey Bergeron and you are watching Corey Bergeron Recordings. In today's video, I'm gonna talk about how I went on tour uh, and I managed to break the headstock of my guitar and managed to get it fixed on the same tour and it has been almost two years now and the guitar is still in working order. The story starts in February of 2017 where my band, Safe to Say, Canadian band, is about to travel overseas to the UK and to Europe to go on tour. The tour package was With Confidence, Broadside, Safe to Say, and Milestones. And uh, if you have any experience touring overseas, you are aware that there are a lot of costs and expenses up front in doing so. Some of those include flights, renting gear, renting a van, hiring a tour manager, um, also printing merchandise overseas, uh, etc. So there are a lot of costs. And my band being my band, we decided that we would uh, do anything and everything we could to keep costs low. So normally when we play in North America, we bring at least two guitars per person on stage uh, when we play. But we decided that we could probably get away with only bringing one guitar each to keep the costs of baggage uh, as low as possible. We were flying with WOW Air, so the flights were really inexpensive, but any extra carry on, or sorry, any extra baggage that you brought with you uh, costs an arm and a leg, so we were trying to keep costs low. So we only brought one guitar. Fast forward a little bit, we arrive in the UK. The flight was uneventful, which is always a good thing, and we are preparing for our first show in London. We are playing at the venue Underworld, or The Underworld, which is a 500 capacity room, and I know that because the show sold out. Pretty exciting, first show overseas, playing to a 500 person sold out crowd. Uh, we bombed. We played one of the worst sets that the band has probably ever played. It was a little embarrassing, but uh, hey, that's, uh, can't go back now and fix that. But the way we would end our sets at that point was we'd have all this chaotic noise, Bah, we'd be ringing out boom, 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 cymbals, guitars, everything's ringing out, super chaotic. And then on the fourth beat, we would all drop out. So it'd be like one, two, three, and then everything would cut out and it would just create this super dramatic effect. And then we'd say, thank you. Uh, and then everyone would throw money at us and yeah, good stuff. When we would drop out, I would do this power move. It was an absolute power move uh, where I would drop my guitar on the ground while everything's cutting out, so you hear everything cut out, and then you hear a guitar hit the ground. It just added to the dramatic effect. I thought I was a rock star, and uh, yeah, so I dropped my guitar on the ground. Little did I know, I probably dropped it on its headstock, but uh, I didn't realize, so pick up the guitar, put it back in the case, we load out, we get ready for the, or we drive to Southampton, and uh, we get ready to play the next show. This is where things get exciting. So we load into the venue the next day, getting ready for sound check. I pull my guitar out of the case and I realize when I'm trying to tune the low E string that uh, that there is, my headstock's broken. It is broken in two pieces and the tuning pegs are the only thing uh, keeping it together. So I do what anyone would do. I look at it and say, oh, that's not good. And I walk to our tour manager, Matt, and Matt was not very impressed with me. And uh, he so he takes the tuning pegs off Make sure that there's a clean break in it, and then he applies some wood glue or some Gorilla Glue, some type of glue to it, and then uses some clamps and clamps it together. And then advises me that I should probably go talk to the other bands on the bill and see if I can borrow a guitar for the show tonight because there's no way that this thing is gonna be in working order. I take a picture of it and I put it on Instagram and uh, just to notify all my friends back home uh, who I saw only a couple days before that I broke the headstock on my guitar at the first show of the, the tour. Thankfully, Niles from Broadside let me use his guitar that night, so I um, I made it through the gig, and after the show, I meet up with Matt, the tour manager, and he happens to be accompanied by his friend Andy, who is also a tour manager, a tech, um, all-around handy dude, and he also plays guitar in a band called Palm Reader. And he says that if he's able to take the guitar home, that he can probably put some screws in the headstock and give it a more semi-permanent fix, maybe a fix that can get it through the tour, and uh, I say, yes, stranger, I trust you. Take the guitar home, mangle it however you wish, and uh, hopefully it is in working order. He also told me that he's gonna be in the town that we are two days later, or maybe one day later, so he can meet up with us, and uh, yeah, if he fixes the guitar, he'll bring it back, and if he doesn't fix it, I guess he'll bring it back still. 
So we meet up in Bristol a couple days later and Andy brings the guitar, uh, pulls it out of the case, gives it to me. It seems to hold its tune, plays like it used to, and he says that he doesn't know how long the, the fix would last, but uh, he did his best. And the fix ended up lasting for the rest of the tour. I played the rest of the tour with the guitar and played it like normal, it's pretty hard on it, um, and it still lasted, and then up until this point, it is still working. I could easily go and buy a new neck for the guitar, um, but I kind of like the idea that I have this like Frankenstein guitar. It's a great memory of my first time touring overseas where I broke the headstock on my guitar on the first show and uh, somehow got it fixed just by trusting some stranger to, to fix it. Um, every so often when I post this, when I post this guitar on Instagram or anything like that, Andy and I still talk here and there, he'll always comment like, that thing's still alive or like it's still holding up. Uh, I'm assuming that since it's held up this long that it'll hold up forever as long as I don't uh, drop it on the headstock again. But uh, pretty crazy story. So that is it for the video. If you like these storytelling kind of videos, I will continue putting out more storytelling videos. Playing in Save to Say puts you in a position to, to experience a lot of crazy, uh, wacky stories. So I have tons more that I would love to share. If you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button. I have a Facebook group, a Facebook group. It'll be the top comment in the comment section there. Click on that Facebook group, join it. Join it because there are like-minded individuals, people that think like you and me. Uh, join that Facebook group, ask some questions, create a discussion, and let's all learn together. And then besides that, uh, you know, follow me on Instagram, drop a like, and uh, I will see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Bye, 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 bye.